Hello and welcome to Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Today is going to be my second installment of 2022 sock designs based on Jane Austen characters, female Jane Austen characters. Maybe next year we'll do male characters or we'll maybe do supporting female characters. I haven't decided. Um, or I might just be so sick of designing socks next year that I don't design socks anymore. We will see. Um, so today I'm going to show you my February socks, talk to you about the design, the test knitting process, etc. And then I'm going to give you a little preview of March. So, as I think I said in my last video, the um, February character is Kitty Bennett from Pride and Prejudice. And um, so another one of the Bennett sisters. And Kitty Bennett is the second youngest. So there are five Bennett sisters. There's Jane and Lizzie. And Lizzie's the main character, but Jane is like the beautiful older sister who's really nice and sweet and you love Jane and everybody loves Jane. That's the whole point of Jane. Um, that's one of her, uh, her character traits. And then there's Mary in the middle who's kind of like really into like playing the piano and teaching everyone about Jesus. Um, and then there's Kitty and Lydia who are the two youngest. And Lydia is the, um, the like real kind of... <laughs> antagonist um of the five sisters kitty's just kind of like her sidekick and lydia's the youngest so kitty's the second youngest and likes to hang out with lydia and like chase after soldiers and stuff so she's poor kitty just like doesn't even think get that much screen time or that many lines and her main thing that she does is complain about mr collins they're uh i'm not sure i think he's their cousin he's like the one who's gonna inherit their estate um, who wants to get married to Lizzie and then Lizzie's like, no. So anyway, um, Kitty, I thought Kitty deserved a nice sock. So here's the thing about Kitty. I'm going to show you, I chose Kitty based on, like I, I chose all the colorways before I chose which character was going to go with which colorway. And I set the colorways out monthly. So I decided the characters are not coming in any, in any order. They're just going with whatever yarn I dyed that I decided was correct for that character. So um, there is a lace pattern on this on the other side, but first I'm just gonna show you the plain side. So if you look at it this way, it looks like a plain vanilla sock, but I just wanted to show you the colorway. And I picked this one for February because it was like pink and Valentine's Day like, but it's pink and variegated and pretty and there's a lot of body in it. There's some grays in there. There's a lot of different tones of pink. Um, so again, I'm gonna show you this side now. This is the lace panel that goes down the side and if you, the other one which is not on a blocker it goes down the other side so in the pattern it will say left sock do this right sock do this and um and then you'll have that on either the outside or the inside of your foot depending on how you want to wear them um so i chose this pattern because i was i was thinking about kitty like what would kitty knit wwkk what would kitty knit and i thought okay kitty likes pretty stuff she would love this yarn and she would not have the patience for something complicated. Like my Jane socks were really complicated because you know, Jane has a lot of patience. Kitty doesn't. So this is a really, but this is pretty. Kitty likes stuff that's pretty and she likes stuff that's not high effort. So Kitty, I think would make this, this is a really easy repeat. It's a four row repeat, the lace pattern and only two rows actually of lace. So on the even rows, all you have to worry about is pearl, the pearl stitches on either side. And the way that this, works is that the pearl stitches on either like in us are part of the rib here and they kind of flow into the pearl stitches of the pattern which i thought was a nice detail the sun keeps going in and out of the clouds so um i'm gonna be probably like the sun will probably be like coming lighting up or not sorry about this carabiner i put this here so i can hang on things my other sock blockers which you'll see because my other i have a sock on those um they have hooks, but these don't. And I like to hang them off the uh, lamps that I hang them on in the living room so that when they're drying, they can display. It's like pretty. So anyway, okay. So yeah, Kitty, Kitty's kind of fun. I just feel like I want the best for Kitty because I don't think she deserves to be like so overlooked by everyone. She's just a girl trying to, trying to get soldiers to notice her. It's fine. Um, this is top down or cuff down, excuse me, uh, as I almost always knit socks cuff down, although I have at least one pair this year that will be bottom up for a patterning reason. Um, and it has 15 rows of one by one rib there. 
It's got, six, this is the medium size, so this has 64 stitches. As always, patterns that I publish will have a small, medium, and large, so we'll have 56 stitches, 64 stitches, and 72 stitches. And if you are a avid sock knitter, unless you have really narrow ankles and feet, you probably know that you need to either knit a 64 or 72 stitch sock. 56 stitch socks are for, I guess they're for kids, but also like if you're knitting with slightly larger yarn, like let's say you're knitting with Tuka wool sock, which is like a little thicker than normal sock yarn. It's more of a sport, maybe like Patton's Croy, that's kind of like a little bit of a thicker sport weight sock, um, something like that. That's kind of the what the 52 or 56 stitch sock is intended for in my mind. Um, maybe you have a loose gauge, I recommend knitting with a tight gauge for sock knitting because the looser your gauge, the faster you're gonna walk through that sock. Like there's gonna be a hole. The, so the tighter the stitches, the, the stronger the sock will be. Um, this yarn is an 80-20 merino nylon blend, um, which is what I my favorite base. Um, so it's like two ply. It's a, it's a pretty typical hand dyed base. I, in the pattern, I will link to several places like indie dyed yarn shops where you can get this specific base. Um, and I will also link to the base if you want to try dyeing your own yarn. You don't actually need that many materials to dye yarn. You need a pot that you're not going to use uh, for like cooking because you could poison yourself. Um, you need gloves, you need acid dyes, and you need like things to mix them in. Like I would make, I make dye stock, so I measure like by weight, a bunch of dye, and then I put boiling water in, in, a, in mason jars or ball jars. Um, but you don't really have to do that. You can just put the powder into the pot. You need an N95 mask, which apparently now everyone has because N95s are like the thing that we need now to protect ourselves from COVID. So um, that's kind of amazing, yeah. <laughs> I use like the really high quality ones. Like, I mean, I bought these masks long before the pandemic and I got like 3M ones that are, they come in, a, they're like wrapped in plastic and they, you have to open them from the like sealed plastic bag and there's like foam all around the nose. Serious Yarn Diaries have like an actual like mask that looks like an alien, like the electric ones that like filter. Um, yeah, you just don't want to be breathing in the dye particles. It's bad for your lungs. So, um, and you need to know things like use all the dye. Don't try not to pour it down your sink if not all the dye gets exhausted in the dye bath and that kind of thing. But now I'm getting into the weeds. Um, you can learn from lots of people how to dye yarn. I learned a lot from Hugh Loco, but also School of Sweet Georgia. She's got a lot of dye classes and you can get books. I'll link the Sweet Georgia book that I um, often use when I'm dyeing yarn below. So, um, this one, yeah, this has just a regular slip stitch, heel flap and gusset, and it has a regular wedge toe, which is when you just like knit one round and then you do the four decreases at either edge of the toe on the top and the bottom, and then you knit one round and you repeat. <clears throat> um, yeah, my second version has an eye of partridge heel. Um, my first, as if you watched my first, my Jane Bennett socks video, um, January, I also did one slip stitch heel flap and then one eye of partridge heel flap, which is the same as a slip stitch heel flap, but you're offsetting where you slip the stitches. So you get like this little pebbled effect, which is really cool. My mom loves eye of partridge heel. It's her favorite. She always uses it. Um, yeah, so there's, these are great patterns. Um, little, just like, they're so simple. They really fly. Um, this handmade life has a bunch of patterns that are kind of like this. They have like lace panels and they're, some of them are free just down the side. There's like Woodland Walk, Wood Nymph, um, Winter's Frost maybe has kind of like this. So I just think it's a, it's an idea. It's, it's just makes a simple sock, but it looks really nice. Um, again, it's really fast because a lot of the sock is just plain knit, but it's still interesting because you're, you're doing other things. Like you still have to think, you still have to follow a chart. This chart is way easier to memorize than the Jane Bennett chart. Um, I promise. I don't, when I, when I release this video, the Jane Bennett socks are not, um, like out yet, but they're in testing right now. So, um, yeah, the, the, uh, if you've knit them, um, that pattern is complicated and it's hard to read. This pattern is not hard to read. It's great. So let me come to this next thing that I'm going to talk about. This is something I've decided to do. Um, so when I first decided to do this challenge. It was just with my hand dyed yarn. And then I thought, okay, if I'm going to write these patterns, 
I need to be using commercial yarn as well. So I need to do one hand dyed and one commercial at least of each pair. Sorry, I'm talking too fast. Um, I'll try to slow down. So then I thought it would be fun if some of the socks were in DK weight and then I could include make a DK at the end of the, like as an extra page um, and you could make them in DK weight, which is either in DK sock yarn, um, which you can get, you can just use any DK weight yarn for socks, but they, uh, mo a lot more um, dyers are doing DK sock bases, which is like, you know, an 80% merino, 20% nylon, or maybe 75, 25 um, merino or nylon or wool and nylon, um, something like that. Um, it's just sort of more widely available or, and I will show an example of this too, I promise, you can hold two strands of fingering weight together. And that personally for me, I love to do that as a scrap, like scrap buster or stash buster. Um, so I have an example of that too. I realize now, I'm sorry, this is coming so late in the video. I have not talked about what I'm wearing. I am wearing a vanilla sweater, <clears throat> the woolly thistle vanilla sweater. Uh, I always make mine with full length sleeves just because my arms get cold. Um, you can see, there you go, you can kind of see this. Um, this is, again, the woolly thistle vanilla sweater is amazing. You should, I've talked about it before, um, but I will never stop talking about it because it's just like such a nice pattern. Um, it's just a plain sweater with a 20 stitches over four inches gauge. Um, the original is done in Rama Fennel Garn. I have made them in lots of different types of yarn. This is knit in Beaver Slide Dry Goods. Beaver Slide Dry Goods. I think it's two ply fingering weight and it's mule spun. Um, and if you have never heard of mule spun yarn, it's like a way of milling that's horizontal instead of vertical. And the thing that I notice about the two yarns that I have worked with that are mule spun in the past, which are this yarn and the Uradale yarns from Shetland, they're really soft. So that may be just the wool, but I don't know if that's a coincidence. I learned about this yarn from this book called Slow Knitting, uh, a journey from sheep to skein to stitch. I don't know what that was. My neighbor's having her roof redone, but my backpack might have just fallen over. Um, and it's by Hannah Thiessen. This is nice. I got this uh, from a friend for Christmas a couple years ago, and I really like it. It's just like, it has really nice patterns in it, but it also talks a lot about like, just like eco-friendly, environmentally thoughtful wool companies. And like, it's just, it's a nice way of thinking, you know, prompting yourself to think about where your wool comes from because, um, you know, I like to know. I I understand that like I'm a hand dyer, so there's gonna be some yarns where I know that it's milled in Italy, but I don't know very much else. And I don't love that. Um, I much prefer to know like that came from sheep from Shetland or that came from even like that, or like, you know, it came from Peace Fleece. Sheep is sheep that's, um, that's um, collected from people on Navajo reservations who sell it at a fair price to um, to peace fleece to the company, um, things like that. It's just, I don't need to know the name of the sheep. That would be nice. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, I think that it's nice to be aware of that. And there are people you can follow who are like talking a lot about sheep on Instagram. There's five sisters farm, which is a farm, uh, that sell that has, and they sell yarn, they have Shetland sheep and their Shetland sheep have names. They're all different colors and they're their wool colors are named after those sheep, like those sheep that they, literally those sheep um, that they have. And I just think that's really sweet. Um, and it's just a really beautiful way to like learn about the wool process and how it gets from the sheep to your hands and to your sweaters. Um, so slow knitting is great. I learned about Beaver Slide Dry Goods from them because they have lots of yarn recommendations in there. And it was pretty inexpensive. I think it was like $15 for a hundred grams. And I got three because it's fingering weight yarn and I typically need between 200 and 300 grams for a fingering weight sweater. And I only used one and a half, maybe almost two skeins of yarn for this entire sweater. So the yardage is extremely generous, like more generous than they probably say. So it's just really lightweight and they get give you hundred gram skeins. And it's so soft, like no problem next to skin. And a lot of yarns are scratchy and you don't want to wear them next to your skin or toothy. This one is not, it is so soft. 
So hugely recommend Beaver Slide Dry Goods and you can just order it right from them. I will put the link in the show notes. I actually had a, a viewer um, recommend them to me in a comment recently and I was like, oh, I know about them, they're the best. They're so soft, I love them. Um, and I would love to try the thicker ones too, but I've only ever tried this one. And I'm wearing my Selbu Snood, which is a double layer snood. You can take this out, it's like a big cowl. I tucked part of it in just because I didn't want it to be up around my face. Um, but if you want to see me talk about this, you can watch the Wooly Thistle Shop cast from February 25th, um, where I have a segment in which I talk about this snood. So I might keep it kind of like this now. It's really cozy. It's very tall and it's knit with, um, Uist wool DK and two colors, which is from the Wooly Thistle. Or I got it from the Wooly Thistle. Um. Yeah, okay, let's continue with the socks. So again, I was just talking about the DK versions. So I did a DK version. And you can see the pattern is, seems quite much, a little bit bigger because, um, just because the motif is, i take it off the blocker. Um, the motif is larger because the gauge is larger. And this is a light green color. This yarn is from a store in Catonsville, which is where I work. Um, Catonsville yarn shop called Clover Hill Yarns and the woman who owns it her name is Amanda this is the eye of partridge heel you can see um and Amanda dyes her own yarn in her basement she has uh I asked her about it once and she was like yeah we just like replaced our range and I put the old range in the basement for yarn dyeing and I was like that's very brilliant and she has a whole line of yarns that she sells at the store and you can order online and I will link it in the show notes and her yarn is called tempting you like ewe yarns um, and this one is called You So Sparkle DK, or something like that. You So Tempting DK. I'm gonna make sure it's in the show notes, but this one had lost some of its sparkle. This, but it's, it, has, it has a little sparkle still. I don't know if you can tell, but she's got sparkle yarns, um, which are really fun if you've never used them. And I thought Kitty would like, you know, older Kitty, just kind of pictured Kitty grown up. But she'd still like a little sparkle. So this has some Selena in it. Um, and yeah, there's the second one here. I did actually finish this time. It's because it's DK yarn. <laughs> These flew. I think I did each one of these in about a day because they were, if you have never tried DK socks, there's kind of like this thing in my head where I thought that, you know, they would have like half the stitches of fingering weight socks. There's way less than that. There's like a quarter of the stitches as there are in fingering weight socks. So it, it is so fast to knit these. Um, yeah, I don't know enough about math to tell you why that is, but I did do the math once and I was like, wow, that's very few stitches. Um, both of these are sort of intended to fit my size of foot, which is a women's seven and a half. These, I think I had 44 stitches. I don't think that's big enough. I think they're like just like a little tight across the top of the foot. When I put the pattern up with the DK weight, they're not gonna be in multiple DK weight sizes. That's too much work for me. If you need to um, figure out your DK numbers, you should buy a DK weight socks pattern um, like Thickmas or Thicksgiving by Summer Lee or something, um, or Vanilla Socks DK weight by Crazy Sock Lady um, because they've got multiple sizes and you can try it out and see what your gauge and your size is based on your knitting and what yarn you're using and stuff and your needle size. Um, these I knit on a size three needle I think most people would knit them on a size four. I'm a loose knitter, so I usually go down a size. I knit my fingering weight socks on a size one, um, which is a normal size. I will not use a size zero needle, and I, the size one is perfectly fine. Um, this is the other the other one that's done on the blocker. So these are Kitty. Kitty Bennett. Kitty B. Kitty B. Um, one of my favorite adaptations of the Lizzie Bennett, or of Pride and Prejudice, is the Lizzie Bennett Diaries on YouTube which I'll link below. It's super funny. It's like a, it's, it's like a girl who's, I mean, she's Lizzie Bennett and she's vlogging. She's like a master's student in communications and she's doing, doing this video blog project. Um, and they only have two of the sisters. They only have the Jane and, and then they have Lydia, but, um, it's really good. My dad uses it in his adaptation class that he teaches, um, at, to college students. It's that good. I'm drinking tea today because it's still chilly. It's February. If you've lived, if you live in the Mid-Atlantic or you have lived in the Mid-Atlantic before, 
February is a really strange month. Like in Vermont where I grew up and in Toronto where I went to college, it was really cold in February. It was just cold, cold, snowy. Vermont's getting a huge snowstorm today and this weekend, I think. Um, but um, yeah, here it's like, sometimes it's like 70 degrees and sometimes it's like 18 degrees. And this is in Fahrenheit for all of you who watch who are Celsius users. Um, so that's crazy. Like today it's pretty chilly. It's like, well, it's getting warmer. It's sunny. It's probably like 45 right now. But like the other day it was 70 and it was so nice. And I went to a bar for pub trivia and we usually sit outside and we did sit outside, but it got cold really fast. And it went from like 60 to like 45 um, luckily my friend lives like right next door to the brewery where we were. So we just went to his apartment and like all of us got a bunch of blankets and coats and sweatpants and we were fine. Um, but it was really cold and we were like all like so excited to sit outside for trivia and then it got cold. So February, weird month. Okay. So I'm going to show a preview of my March socks. I'm not going to give you any details about them yet. You have to watch the March episode which will be out in a month um but uh I may have shown these on a whip roundup I'm not gonna show you a lot of these these are um these are the main pair this is with I did not dye this yarn this is um I think this is the farmer's daughter fibers sock squad in the Christmas crack colorway and highwood sock which is an 80-20 base this is I'm gonna be making a, two, a few pairs of March because they, as you can see they're textured and so they're just like really simple and they're nice and unisex but I wanted to show the other pair that I made, um, which is with scrap yarn. And so for this, this is also a DK pair. I held the DK weight or I held fingering weight sock yarn double. So throughout, there's a white strand. These ended up being really Christmassy also. They're both Christmassy socks. Um, I wasn't thinking they would be Christmassy, but I chose the greens first. And then I chose this like pinky kind of color for the heels, toes, and cuffs. And it turned out to look kind of like watermelon Christmas. Um, I used scrap for this. Again, I just did like, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stripes here um, of 16 rows or rounds of each stripe. Um, and it ended up being great. And they're all greens. This one's a really light green. I tried to make it so that you could see the contrast. Like I thought about doing a, um, like a fade, but I don't know. Some of them were really similar. Like this top one and then this middle one and this last one are all so similar that I was like, you, nah. And then like one's teal. I didn't, I don't want to do a fade. Some of them I dyed myself. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I dyed myself. And then these two were Farmer's Daughter sock box. Um, but yeah, you can hold, hold double to get a DK gauge. These are 40, 48 stitches and these fit a little better um, than the and green ones here um, but that's fine DK weight socks are kind of like house slippers anyway so um, okay let's talk about test knitting so my last video for the Jane socks actually just went up like a month ago and I would not expect my test knitters necessarily to have finished them um, but I will um, I'll put I'll put a test link for kitty socks um, in the, in the show notes, um, again, I'm not like totally anticipating. Yeah. I'm trying to think, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link to a test knitting form in the show notes and you can fill it out. Um, and I'll send you the pattern in like a month. Like it's not going to come right away. It's going to come, uh, kind of after I'll get, I mean, just because a lot of people like to knit, like my test knitters are, are saying, not everyone, but a lot of them are saying, oh yeah, I would like to knit all the pairs. Like, that's great. But I don't want you to like feel like you're rushed to do one. So because the, the patterns won't necessarily be released once a month, um, they might be. But like, because once I have the template, I'm working on a design, like the InDesign template for my socks. And once I have the template, it's really easy to just go in and change it and then publish a new sock pattern but I think I'm gonna do like two months in between releases instead of a month so the patterns will probably come out over the span of a couple of years um but I will be posting well I don't know maybe I'll wait 
like my main goal was to knit the socks every month to design the socks every month and knit them so I might wait like I might start doing them every releasing these videos every two months um just to kind of like spread things out a little bit just because it's it just a lot um I guess it'll happen when it happens but if you want to test knit these socks the kitty bennett socks let me know in the by filling out a form that will be in the show notes there's going to be a google test form there with all the information that you need so here's the thing test knitters um a couple of things some of you have said like in your responses i i want to be on the list to test knit all your socks um if so great i noted that down you don't have to send me another um you don't have to fill out another form um let's see so there's that um if you want to test it here's the things to know um this is a lace sock so my test pattern is going to come in like a word document and it will not be fancy it will have instructions like written instructions um for how many stitches to cast on and like where to put a stitch marker like where to place the lace panels and stuff um but if it would be helpful to you um if you would like if you are someone who has knit socks before um it will just be helpful because you'll be able to choose the correct size without a lot of guidance um because i'm not going to have like gauge needles all that stuff like you you need to know what your needles and your yarn and you, like or you know your yarn weight and your your preferred stitch counts are um and also because this is a pretty bare bones pattern um like the lace charts just like there it is it's not gonna have a key it's not gonna have anything um so you should be familiar with reading lace symbols on a chart and how a chart works um in the final pattern all of that would of course be included um because the final pattern is a lot more work um but again once i have a template it will be a lot easier um and i will include the the stitch counts and stuff for the dk weight if you'd like to do that um so you can hold two yarns double or you can um or you can do a dk sock yarn so there's those two things um so i will include numbers for heel flap gusset stitch pattern for that etc um the numbers for the heel turn all of that will be included um so if you are like a really adventurous beginner sock knitter who knows how to read a lace chart you'll have all the information you need but there won't be a lot of pattern support like because this is a test knit i'm not necessarily going to be you can email me with questions i will get back to you but um i would really appreciate if you were a sock knitter or like someone who is, is comfortable with knitting socks already um just to make things easier for me and for you because i i really just again you can find errors that are like errors in the pattern like errors in numbers and stuff i would love to know that um but um yeah this is you know i just want there to people to people like knitting socks people like test knitting um and i like to see your socks and so it's nice that like when somebody puts a pattern on ravelry there's already like 20 projects that people can see um so that's fun and i'm going to keep the test knitting link open for like a month on this one just because i might not send the pattern out for another month um and again, you don't need to finish the socks before they're released. These ones probably released in like, I don't know, April, May. Um, and yeah, all those, all those are things. One thing, um, so I, again, as I said, I knit socks from the cuff down to the toe. I don't love toe up socks. I do it really occasionally, but not a lot. I use a heel flop and gusset. And I do like a two by two rib or a one by one rib, usually sometimes twisted rib. Uh, you can use any cuff pattern. You can knit the leg to any length. You can knit any kind of heel you want. You can knit any kind of toe you want. You can knit shorties. You can knit knee socks. It doesn't matter. It's like what, because I, I really advocate for people knitting the socks or the pieces that they want to wear. Like make this work for you um, based on what you or your people who you're giving them to want to wear. The main thing is just that it has this lace pattern down the leg or the foot, like ant foot or just foot if you are doing a shorty sock. 
Um, like that's the whole, that's the, the, the main part of the pattern. The rest of it's just a sock. Like thousands of people put sock patterns on Ravelry. Um, that's not the special part. Um, so make them special for you. I want you to enjoy the socks. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, this is again, a second lace pattern in a row. Next month, the socks are gonna be texture socks. So knits and pearls, um, or next month. Next time I, I release a test knit sock pattern, which may be two months from now, might be next month, um, they will be, it's a knit and pearl texture pattern. Um, somebody said they look like fish scales the last time they saw me knitting them. So maybe you think that too. You can see it up close. There it is. You can guess in the comments if you want who these socks are based on. Um, there's, I think I said in the last video, there's um, 13. So there's five Bennett sisters, Mrs. Bennett, Lady Catherine de Berg, and then there's the two Dashwoods, Emma from Emma, my namesake. She's uh, April coming up. Um, who else? Anne Elliott from Persuasion, and Fanny, and Catherine from Northanger Abbey. Fanny's from Mansfield Park, and I think that's all of them. So I, I was talking to my college roommate a couple weeks ago on FaceTime, and I said, which ones do you want? I'll make you some. She can't wear wool. So um, I I, one of the things I'm doing again is like using commercial yarns. As I said, these yarns are from Tempting You Yarns by um, the by the, the woman who owns uh, Cloverhill Yarn Shop in Catonsville, Maryland. And I'm trying to use like a, a, a nice variety of yarns. So of commercially available yarns. So Indie Dyed and, um, and like commercial ones, whatever other materials. I'm interested in using natural sock yarns. I'm interested in using really woolly sock yarns. I'm interested in using um, ones from bigger names that are less expensive. And I am also interested in using non-wool or animal fiber, like vegan essentially sock yarns because I wanted to pair from a college roommate who can't wear wool. And so um, please, if you have suggestions at all for sock yarns, put them in the comments. Um, I would just love to like build up a little um, spreadsheet of types of yarns and I would love to feature those as suggestions for, in my patterns um, and maybe try them out. Like I have a lot kind of lined up even as the commercial yarns go, um, but I, I would love to try out a variety of different ones. And again, if you're test knitting, please use any yarn you want. And the more the merrier because then there's more examples of people who have test knit these with a variety of yarns and people can see what they look like in a variety of yarns. So, um, yeah, I would really, um, I would really recommend that. Uh, really recommend recommending yarns to me in the comments. Uh, is that your favorite? What's your favorite sock yarn? Put it in the comments. I'm going to ask this every single video, uh, of socks. So, um, yeah, let me know. Cause I'm, I'm interested. And what else? Um, oh, I was talking to her about, I was like, which, which ones, you know, which character do you want? She said, I want Isabella from Northanger Abbey. And I was like, I'm not doing minor characters like Isabella from Northanger Abbey, who is hilarious. I grant you that. Um, she's, she's so funny. She's so full of herself and she's like so pompous and she's such, she's such an idiot. Um, but she's very funny. She's, uh, she's a good antagonist. She's not like the worst, but she's pretty bad. Um, so it's like maybe next year I'll do minor characters. Cause like there's so many in like, and like, um, what's the one? Mansfield Park, <laughs> like Fanny's or like nice aunt, like Mrs. Bertram is the nice one. And then Miss Nora, Mrs. Norris is the like really mean aunt. Um, and then there's like um, the other, the other characters anyway. Like, and then like, you know, the younger sister, Dashwood, Margaret Dashwood, and then like, what's her name? Like, you know, Jane Fairfax from Emma and, you know, Harriet from Emma. Um, there's lots of minor characters. And then I would like to do some based on the men too. Like, you know, they should have their say. Um, again, I'm doing some gender neutral, gender neutral, non-lace patterns. I'm doing some non-lacy patterns. Anyone can wear lace. Anyone can wear textured socks. Anyone can wear black socks. Anyone can wear bright orange socks. People should wear whatever socks they want and they should love whatever socks they make. So um, yeah, that's, I say gender neutral, like, because, and I say that because like lots of people have folks in their life who aren't gonna wanna wear lacy socks. Like that's whoever those folks are. Um, 
whoever they are. It does not matter, people. They're all people. Um, so yeah, if you have suggestions for yarns or colors you wanna see, or like you know a Jane Austen character, one of the ones I mentioned, and you think that they're like, there's a perfect color for them, tell me in the show notes uh, or in the in the comments because um, I want to know what you think. Um, I have my ideas, but you will have yours and I would love it if you then tested it in your color of choice. So um, I think that's all. I think this is a long enough video. Um, so yeah, here's my Jane Bennett socks. No, hold, maybe, no, there's no on the blockers. There they are. Not my Jane, these are Kitty Bennett socks. What am I talking about? Here's my Kitty Bennett socks. Trying to find a good, I'm trying to hold them up a lot so that YouTube actually recommends a, a thumbnail where I'm holding up socks. But in case not, there's a little screenshot where I can <laughs> watch it back and um, screenshot these. Here we go, Kitty Bennett socks. Um, so thank you so much for watching. This has been Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Bye.